Welcome to Toronto TV. Today we have a special guest who is the expert in poultry industry. Who is Jimmy Lee? Jimmy, hello. In fact, hello. Hi. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Jimmy. Can you talk about your immigrant experience to Canada? Yes. Well, I immigrated and I immigrated to Canada at about you know ten to about twelve years old. Guys, I was born in you know Trinidad. Uh, my you know parents, well, basically my grandparents moved there during the Second World War, and and that's where you know, and and then my you know mom and dad immigrated there because my grandparents just just cannot do you know hard 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 labor when they come to you know when they come to you know Canada or the United States so they move over there so I was born over there and then I immigrated to Canada at about you know 10 to 12 years old I went to high school here um, but I can speak a lot of Cantonese but I'm not very fluent in it as much as people from Hong Kong <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Much as am I. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I'm a Mandarin speaker. Oh, well, that is good. I don't understand any Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, so your grandparents, uh, I mean, from China to, to Trinidad. So, yes. where's your hometown in China? My hometown in China was basically, um, you know, um, what's it called? Oh, yeah, you know, Gong Hoi. Gong Hoi. Canton yeah. Province. Hong yeah, Hong Kong yeah. province. Yes, okay. that's what my father tells me, and that's what my mother tells me. Hong Kong is Hakka, Chuzhou, or uh, um, it's not Hakka for sure. Okay. It's, uh, it, oh, oh, oh yes, it is. You know, Sunwei. Sunwei. Oh, I yeah. got it. Okay, that's Sunwei. My, that's what my parents tell me. <laughs> okay. Have you been going back to hometown before? I mean. I went back a few years ago, but I got close to it, but I never got to Sunwei. Um, I heard Sunwei has a lot of uh, famous for, you know, orange peels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just listening to what my parents tell me. That's it. <laughs> so uh, you say you came to, as a kid, teenager, you come to Canada. Do yes. you face any difficulty? adapting to Canadian lifestyle or you got any bullying experience? Not really, because when I was in, where, when I was in, you know, Trinidad, there wasn't a lot of people that was really, you know, basically trying to, you know, pick on you. So I didn't experience a lot of that here. But then again, when you're in, you know, Trinidad with a lot of, you know, black people, you learn to be very tough. You try not to, yeah, you try not to get, you know, bullied around. And I had, you know, two sisters and a younger, you know, brother who was younger than me anyway. So, but, you know, we never experienced that here. I went to, you know, grade school here. Then I went to high school and then I went to university mm -hmm. over here. So what's, what do you study in university? Um... At university, I went to University of you know Guelph, and I studied uh, basically basically some of the animal and poultry science because at that time my father wanted to to start a small business to make extra money. That was in 1970. So basically, when I went to high school and I went to to university, my father. I started a small business, so I thought it would be wise to actually study some of the, you know, uh, some of the agriculture stuff to help my father out, mm -hmm. and that way I can be a little bit more, more sort of, you know, sort of more knowing that particular type of, uh, you know, business, so that a lot of, you know, government regulations would not, you know, would not sort of impede my father's, you know, particular business mm -hmm. at that time. So I studied animal and poetry science for four years. I have a bachelor of, of science in, you know, agriculture. So that's, uh, and then after that, 
worked for my dad for his business and I ran his business for another, you know, 20 years. And then after that, my father decided to retire. So basically my dad sold his business to a company called Sergeant Farms. And at that time, Sergeant Farm, they wanted me to kind of help them run this because this is my father's business. So after that, I was farm for about five years and I started my own business again, which is in the year 2001, I, somewhere in that range there. I started another company in the poultry business, but this was a federal, this was a federal plant. So this was not a you know provincial plant because before Sergeant Farms and my father's business were you know provincial plants. So I started a federal plant so that way you know I can export stuff and I could import stuff from the United States too. So from then on, I started that that particular business with with a, with another person, which is my partner, you know, Joseph Wong. And um and after you know 10 years, I sort of decided to sort of say, this is enough for me. I have spent practically 35 years of my life in the poultry business and studying everything else. And I said, you know, it's time to kind of take it easy. So I decided to sort of semi-retire and maybe do something else. <laughs> so that means you have enough money and enjoy yourself now. I invested in some real estate. Um, <laughs> Not not a lot of money, but yeah. some real estate yeah. and, and some other things good, anyway. Good, good to live, like, I mean, enjoyable right there. Okay. That's but right. <laughs> back to a little bit. So you say your father took you to Canada. So why? what's the reason your father immigrated from Trinidad to, to Canada? Well, the reason he immigrated from Trinidad to Canada was because during that time, there was a, there was a big arm. Um, you know, problem going on in the United States called, you know, black, you know, power. And that was affecting some of the, you know, Caribbean, you know, islands too. Mm -hmm. So my dad thought that's not a good place to have his family there. So we immigrated to Canada instead of going to the, the United States because there was some, you know, racial problems going on, I think, during that time. And my dad didn't like what was going on there. And he saw a lot more better opportunity here in, you know, Canada because of the, you know, diverse, you know, cultures over here compared to the United States where there was a lot of racism and stuff like that between blacks and whites and everything like that. So that's the main reason. I think it's a very good choice. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> yeah, when when they covered by the 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 uh, provincial like uh, the health um, health program, yeah. I think oh, we yeah. are very lucky. We don't need to put our money from our pocket in the insurance. Yes, and we get covered, right? Comparing yes, Americans. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you say you are in poultry business. What's the meaning of poultry? Chicken, duck, goose. The, you know, poultry business includes, you know, basically, you know, chickens. Birds. It mainly refers to basically chickens, actually. Okay. Not so much ducks in that sense, because first of all, the, you know, poultry is, have three sections. Mm -hmm. There is the, you know, growing section. There is the, you know, egg section. And mm -hmm. then there is the, you know, chick section. Chick section was the section. Okay before you can make make some you know make before you can make some meat mm -hmm. you have to have eggs to yeah. hatch into chicks mm -hmm. yes okay now okay. those those particular chicks i see small chicken. have to be put into a barn yeah those small yeah. little chickens have yeah. to be put into a barn and normally those you know barns are very big those barns hold roughly about somewhere between 13,000 to about 200,000 birds in a barn. It depends on the size of so, so. that particular barn. Yeah. Okay. Now, when I tell you there is three sections, now there is, there is the section with 
with just you know eggs and there was that particular section with the eggs those are not fertilized eggs so they never become chicks okay. so those are the ones we eat at the store which mm -hmm. you buy every day okay now now people see you know brown eggs white eggs organic eggs yeah basically the particular the particular type of eggs brown eggs white eggs is because of the breed of the chickens that lay those eggs and they become white or brown. But the nutritional value of those eggs, there is no difference whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's just the you like it or not? It's yeah, just... <laughs> I mean, there is a very small difference, very minuscule you know, difference with that. Yeah. Nothing, right? Even some so, egg put omega-3 or they are more yeah. yellow. Right. No, um, the reason the the reason the eggs become more yellow is because they feed it more corn. Oh. The more corn they feed it, it has more lysine in the corn, which gives it that that more yellow is. Yeah. Yet, mm -hmm. yet. Now we know oh. that. <laughs> okay, yeah. and when they say you know the omega, um, free, free run eggs, free run chickens, all of this, okay. First of all, <laughs> yeah, let me tell you this, okay? All of, all of those eggs, which, which everybody eats, those eggs are actually, there is about five, five or six birds, or somewhere between five and six birds, they are in a cage, right? And they lay eggs, and they lay eggs roughly for about one year. Mm -hmm. And then they get slaughtered okay. and they replenish it again. So mm -hmm. those those are a little bit different than the than the birds we are consuming for meat because those chickens are very small and they are they are genetically there just to lay eggs only. They are selected just to lay eggs. Mm -hmm. But those eggs are not fertilized because there is no male chicken there mm -hmm. okay so those eggs are not fertilized at all okay okay so now you go into the other section where they have you know those particular chickens for meat mm -hmm. now those ones for meat you have to have you have to have a you know different set of hens and those hens are very big and they lay eggs for about one year too but there is five hens and one rooster and the rooster fertilizes the eggs and those eggs are taken to the hatchery to be hatched out, which takes 21 days exactly to hatch a baby chick out. Okay. Now, okay. once that is hatched out, those guys send all those baby chicks to the farm to be raised for meat. Now, all of those baby chicks depending on the farm, what size that the farm contracts from the processing company, they will, they will raise those particular chickens to a certain size. Some of it goes to you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, some of them goes to Swiss Chalet because, the, because those companies have a certain size that they require from the processing company. Companies like Maple Leaf, Maple Lodge, you know, and so forth. Those are the larger companies. Do they also separate the female and the male chicks? Yes, they do. They do separate the male and the female chicks. The female chicks goes into making some of the smaller chickens, like the, you know, KFC, the, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, the Swiss Chalet and stuff like that. The male one goes into large meat production. So every time there are, there are companies who, who, who actually purchase meat. So they want to raise birds as large as possible and, and certain plants only process large birds and certain plants only process a certain size birds for that. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> so you mean small and large? Yeah. What, what's the many like weight difference? Maybe say three pounds okay. below is small and then Two pounds. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, you know, let's put it this way. Normally, 
it takes around somewhere between 28 and 35 days from the baby chick mm. at the one day old yeah. to, so about, so to about somewhere between 28 and 35 days, depending on the size that, that you know, the farm has to contract for the processor. Okay. Okay. So basically what you're going to have is all of those are, you know, basically female chicks, mm -hmm. mostly, okay. right? Some of the larger ones where those guys sex, sex it to, you know, male chicks. So basically what happens is that some of the plants only process large, large, large birds mm -hmm. for meat production, which can, which can, you know, go into further processing. I like, um, like, for example, you know, you know, chicken, you know, Kiev and things like that. And, you know, chicken fried rice, which is vacuum packed and, uh, and all those, you know, those, you know, chicken, you know, dinners and stuff like that. So that's what a lot of those things go into. So, sorry, I sort of, sort of. No, yeah, that's okay. I, 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 think I still understand that. Yeah. <laughs> So I think then, it's, it's very, very impressive. It, yeah. yeah. Uh, then I okay. Let's let's see. What we see is like chicken. We have like female chicken, and then the male chicken is the. Uh, are there any different types? For some like like uh, oh, oh, American okay. chicken wow. or uh, Asian chicken. Okay. Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. 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 People want to know. What's the difference between certain types of chickens that, that some of the restaurants have, which yeah. is, for example, long gong kai, right? Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Or, you know, chow day kai or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Anytime you see something like long gong kai or chow, I mean, long gong kai is, is a different breed of chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not your regular white chicken. Okay. Where, okay, now let's kind of go back a little bit. All of the white chicken that that a lot of the plants process, right? Mm -hmm. Those chickens are so those particular chickens are selected from a whole bunch of you know different breeds to have the best meat production at the fastest growing rate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And 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 first of all, before anybody goes crazy, there is never any hormones put in any of the chickens in Canada. Okay. I can't speak about any other country, mm -hmm. but I know for sure Canada, it is absolutely not allowed to put any hormones in any animal at all. Hormone free, yeah. So it's, it's, all, always it's hormone. all safe. Right? It is all to, safe. To children, yeah. Yes, okay. There is no such thing as hormones going into any animals in oh. Canada. Okay. I was thinking the meat chicken in like the supermarket, not Chinese supermarket. I was thinking they, they, their legs are so big, so maybe they eat something. No. The reason those are big is because those are the male chickens. Big, big, because male chickens grow faster than mm -hmm. female chickens. Female chickens, you know, put on more fat. Male chickens put on more lean as, they, as, as you raise them longer. But the most important thing is, is that they are selected for fast growing and for mm -hmm. feed efficiency. Mm -hmm. Because some of the feed, we feed them are some of the best feed. Mm -hmm. So when they eat that feed, they actually convert that feed into meat faster than mm -hmm. most of the chickens. Okay. So, so, so what they do is they, those guys select all of the best sort of the best types of breeds that mm -hmm. actually put more weight on in terms mm -hmm. of breast. Now, now North America is a white meat consumption, mm -hmm. you know, basically, you know, continent. Mm -hmm. So most people want white meat, white meat, because it's more healthier, mm -hmm. less fat, mm -hmm. right? So that's the reason why in Canada and the U.S., they all they are they are always concerned about white meat, white meat, white meat. So they mm -hmm. grow chickens for white meat purposes mm -hmm. because of, of, of that. Mm -hmm. Now, when somebody says it's you know free run chickens, mm -hmm. all of the chickens are running in the barn very freely. That is only a 
some sort of way to actually get you to, to pay more for that chicken. All of the chickens are free run. All of the chickens are grain fed. All of the feed is, is from grains. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's no difference there. Okay. So the Saudi G uh, looks like a smaller and uh, smaller, smaller right? and uh, skinner. Yeah. 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 No muscle. I, when you <laughs> eat, it's chewable. It's harder. The meat. Okay. Right. Some of the some of the longgong chicken, which is uh -huh. a different type of chicken, uh -huh. those take longer to raise because uh -huh. that's a that's that is a different breed of chicken. You mm -hmm. have to feed it longer. Okay. to to you know get that size because mm -hmm. that's a different breed they don't select that for meat production mm -hmm. they only select it for the taste mm -hmm. so yeah. that's why only certain farms not a lot of farms raise those type of chicken mm -hmm. and then uh, and then there is only two or three plants that actually kill those kind of chickens mm -hmm. okay okay so there's only maybe two or three plants that actually started and most of those plants are not federally those are provincial plants. Mm -hmm. So they can only sell them in Ontario. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of the things you have to know is that, you know, provincial plants can only sell their meat in Ontario. Basically, whereas federal province, plants, yeah. yeah, whereas federal plants can sell it to other provinces and to, you know, different countries. Different export. When you right? talk about processing plants. Yeah. So the you know, well, I, I, I did remember I saw a movie before. It's a, it's a chicken farm, and then they put all the chickens in the cages, and then the story tells like the owner switch on and off the light. So when you switch on, daytime, the chicken eat, eat, eat. <laughs> and they turn off the light, and they say, Normal oh, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> sleep. No, 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 no. <laughs> and then Never they... <laughs> sleep. It, 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 it does not happen that way. It, it does not happen that way. So this is a story, not a reality. <laughs> When you're talking about when you're talking about you know meat, when you're talking about meat production, yeah. there is a certain there's a certain there's a certain light schedule for the chickens. Okay. Okay. So a, so they they give those chickens a certain amount of light every day mm -hmm. and a certain amount of darkness every day. Yeah. Okay. So when when there is light. There is feed be, because all of those, those farms they are very you know computerized. Yeah, automation. there is automatic feed yeah, coming automatic. through. There is automatic water coming through all the time, right? Yeah. And certain times they will have no feed because it's time for the chickens to not eat that much because they only feed them a certain amount of feed. Mm -hmm. So that's for the meat production. So certain times there's a there is enough light for the chickens, mm -hmm. you know, to grow, and there is certain darkness for the chickens to take yes. a rest. Yes. Yeah. So that's normal in a huge barn. That's what happens. When you're talking about when you're talking about you know the egg production, that's a different story. They're in a little cage with about five chickens, but those are very small chickens. Those chickens are are basically bred for egg production only they don't weigh very much those chickens probably weigh maybe maybe you know two maybe two you know, maybe two and a half pounds you know three pounds roughly okay but they are specifically there to lay eggs for people to consume because they are not fertilized mm -hmm. they are lucky okay. yeah right <laughs> their so, life is longer yeah, no, their life is is about is about one year. One year. And then they one year is better than twenty days. Yeah. yeah. So that's the life of a chicken. It's roughly about one year. Okay. Especially if you're laying eggs. But when you talk about meat production, the old chickens are there only for about twenty eight to so uh, 35 days, that's for the smaller chickens, but for the larger chickens, it's about 45 to about 50 days. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to start. Now, now, you know, each farm can actually raise chickens probably about six times a year. So okay. when you talk about that, okay, so say if uh, so say if somebody has about, say about, you know, 20,000 20, chickens, 
you could raise that six times a year, right? Mm -hmm. So multiple six. So you know, right? yeah, roughly. It depends on it depends Size on number. what what the particular contract is mm -hmm. with the processor. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, you know, all of this is all under a marketing board. There is a quota system for all this stuff. Okay. So the marketing board, you Design. know, determines from from all of the processors, mm -hmm. how much production is is required in the next six months. So that's trying to forecast what's happening in the next six months. Okay. And it's hard to forecast what's happening in, in the next six months because you have to also find enough eggs to hatch enough chicks for that production. If you mm -hmm. can't get enough eggs, you have to import eggs from, you, from the United States to get that production. Sometimes you have too much eggs. So, so. There, so it's a very fine balancing act there, okay? Mm -hmm. But the marketing board controls that and the marketing board controls the egg production for, for people to consume too be, because if there's too much eggs, the price goes down and the farmer doesn't make any money, right? Okay. So they try to balance everything mm -hmm. in that sense, right? But you have to remember, this is all under, you know, quota. And all of that particular, and, and, and all of that particular quota is worth a lot of money to the farmers. So those particular quotas are in units. How many units that, that the farmer is allowed to raise? One unit depending on how, one unit depending on what size of chickens he's raising with the processor will determine how many chicks he has to put into the farm. Mm. Okay. It's a little bit complicated when it gets yeah, this industry, a lot of limitations. Uh, yes, there's yeah. a lot of limitations. And administration, but, right? Yeah. But we actually, you know, control it here. Whereas some countries, they don't control it and it's very, very cheap. But oh. then you have a lot of problems because people take shortcuts to put out something that's very cheap. Yeah. Now, one of the main things over here, which most people don't realize is that, is that here, every time we ship out one set of you know, chickens, they clean and they fumigate and they disinfect the whole barn before they put the next batch in. Mm -hmm. In the United States, they don't do that. The, as soon as those guys send out one, one set of chicks, yeah. they, they just put in some you know, sawdust and they put the next batch in. They don't, they don't clean anything. So that's it could be very dangerous, right? So yeah, it could be very dangerous. It you know, we like to keep it safe because the marketing board makes sure you control all, all of the you know diseases and st and stuff like that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So there's no cross-contamination all the time. I see. Mm -hmm. now, you know, I can't say that is going on all of the time in in the in the United States. But it does happen where they don't clean out the barn because they need to have so much production. Now, don't forget the United States have a lot of people compared to, to Canada, whereas the United States have, have 300 million people. You know, we only have 30 million people here. So it's, so it's, so it's about, you know, 10 times as, you know, as much as what we have here. Yeah. So they have to feed a, a lot more people. Mm -hmm. And don't forget over here, we have a lot of hot and cold weather because we are, we are, we are more north. Mm -hmm. So we have to control that particular barn very carefully, right? In mm -hmm. the United States, they, you know, they mostly grow most of their chickens in the south, right? So they can have a lot of production. Gotcha. But I can't say too much about, about the U. Uh, 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 about the United States, mm -hmm. I can only tell you what happens here, okay, yeah. um, what I learned from before, mm -hmm. and it's just being in the industry for about thirty-five years of my life, yeah. you know, almost forty years. Yeah. You, you know, my relatives always complain that you know the taste of chicken in Hong Kong is much better than in Canada. 
Yeah. Any, any particular reason? Everything. <laughs> Even the cucumber. Yeah. The spinach. Yeah. Well, I can't say anything about Hong Kong. I don't know how they <laughs> raise their chicken, but it seems like if they have a lot more problems when it comes to, you know, diseases, where those guys have to kill all of the chickens yeah. and there's yeah. no chicken yes. available. Yes. That's, That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Because I think one of the problems in Hong Kong is that they they must have a sort of, I mean, they must have a, some sort of, you know, government control mm -hmm. where they have inspectors that will not be bribed. Yeah. Okay. But into... I think uh, we, we, we don't go into government regulation. <laughs> we talk about the taste. Okay. Yeah. Is, it, is it because they're different breeds? You know, I think I believe the breed in yeah. Hong Kong is different from the one in Canada, yes. right? Yeah. So also it, here we look we look at the Canadian chicken, as Rebecca say, so huge, so big. Yeah, what do they eat yeah. is different, I think. <laughs> in Hong Kong, always small chicken, right? So. Yeah. Well, well, you know, well, basically Hong Kong and in the Far East, they have a they have a you know different breed of chickens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not the same breed we have over here. Yeah. Okay, that's the main thing. Can because we import those breeds to Canada? We can try to import those into Canada, mm -hmm. but you know, agriculture in Canada will have to, they have very strict regulations for that okay. because they don't want to bring any you know, diseases from over there mm -hmm. and putting it over here because, be, be, because if that happens, we're going to have a bigger problem here mm -hmm. and that could destroy the whole poultry industry over here too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why there are very strict regulations for that. Mm -hmm. We have already tried to actually, you know, bring in certain types of breeds mm -hmm. from over there. But when you look at it, I think we're doing pretty good over here. And the food is very safe over here compared mm -hmm. to most countries. Yeah. I don't think we are doing too bad over here, okay. even though we don't get the same taste, mm -hmm. but over there, but we get something that is not that bad actually. Right. You know, yeah. and, and another question, you know, when we buy the whole chicken, some yeah, of the head, some of the head, then that's something that is different. Okay, no, okay, I repeat my question. Say, when we, when we go to the supermarket, we buy the sometimes we can buy the whole chicken or but just part, buy parts of the chicken, the chicken yeah. laying it again twice. For the whole chicken, sometimes we see that you can get a head, some without a head. So, what's the difference? Oh. That was created by me and my father a long time ago. <laughs> because so we, you're actually, the yeah. we actually, you know, sort of, um, we actually, we made a big case to Agriculture Canada. Okay. Saying that for the Chinese tradition or for the Chinese culture, mm -hmm. okay, we must have, have, to process the chickens with the head and feet on. Okay. Because yeah. you know how the Chinese say, yo tao, yo yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes. They buy some, right? Mm -hmm. So we made a big petition to them and they agreed to that as long as we are catering to the Chinese community for that. Okay. okay? It doesn't happen all the time but it happens most of the time because most of the chickens with the head feet are going to the Chinese supermarkets. Not a lot of English supermarkets carry. Now, some of the English supermarkets can carry it if they want to, if they have Chinese customers, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But that was because of us making a big case way back in, in you know, I guess, you know, not in around, you know, 1980s around there. Mm -hmm. where there was a lot of changes going on in the industry. And we made a big case because we had people lining up every Chinese New Year mm -hmm. in the Kensington market from here all the way down the street, just waiting for to buy the chicken, for, to buy the chicken with the head and the feet on. The whole chicken. Yes. Yeah. Want the whole chicken, right? Actually, we don't eat turkey. <laughs> we eat chicken right <laughs> yeah yeah chinese people love to eat chicken it's it's a main thing <laughs> yeah it's like daily food right yeah <laughs> lots of you like chicken yes 
I love chicken. Even up to now, I still eat chicken all the time. I would rather eat chicken oh. than I eat, uh, you know, pork. Or pork, right? Because yeah. you know it's safe and it's healthy, right? Yeah, you know, Just I know it's safe. production. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I think somebody told me before, like a long time ago in Chinatown, that's the slaughterhouse for chicken. And then some worker can make a lot of money because they, they cut the whole chicken, they cut the head, cut the wings, and also cut the thigh. And each chicken process to get some money. Is that right? Or now it's going to automation? Um, well, way back then, when my father started his small little business, yeah. To make some money for the family, we just started out with about 500 chickens. Okay. Uh, well, it started out with, with less. It was like about a, it was like about 30 chickens, and people would just come in live. They would, they would pick up the chicken, they would feel up the chicken, make sure yeah. it's nice, and then we would slaughter each one for each customer. Then it got to the point where, you know, Chinatown back then was by, you know, Bay Street and uh, somewhere between Bay Street and, you know, university around there. Mm -hmm. Then a whole bunch of Chinese restaurants there asked us if, if we can send them chickens with the head of feed on. So we decided to sell 10 chickens at a time. So my father's business grew from say about 30 to 50 chickens to about 500 chickens within within two or three years mm -hmm. right and then from then from 500 chickens being five then after as time goes on it became like 5,000 chickens every day mm -hmm. and then uh, that was when when Chinatown moved from Bay Street all the way to Spadina area Mm -hmm. And there was all these huge restaurants coming on at that time in the 1980s and everything else. And I was going to university and then I had to come back on the weekend to help my dad deliver chickens. So that's where I learned some of my Cantonese, trying to learn from these cooks and everything. And yeah. uh, <laughs> it was a business that I just had to help out, you know. And, um, you know, going back, to your question about you know what particular you know cuts of those chickens at that time we were throwing away all of the parts mm. we i mean way back then we were just you know giving all of the parts to some of the employees and stuff like that then it came to the point where we had so much parts we had to cut it up because we can make money from the parts like the legs and the wings and the breasts and stuff like that. so there was a company called saint andrew's poultry that was in front of us and we started to start cutting out chickens for them. Then my dad started a supermarket business mm -hmm. up in, I think it's in uh, by, you know, Steels at, um, what's that place called? Oh, oh yes, Market Village. Market Village, yeah, okay. Yeah, when yeah. he started that, right? Mm -hmm. And he started that particular <laughs> supermarket with a small little stall and he had grew into a huge place. Mm -hmm. And then I had to supply more chickens up to there. Then my dad opened up another store down in Scarborough mm -hmm. on Shepherd. So I had to supply more chickens over there. So it mm -hmm. got more and more and more. And then after that, my dad started, a, he started one of the first food basics supermarket. He purchased one of the, one of the food basics. Mm -hmm. So then I had to supply about 20 something food basics by just cutting up chickens alone and packaging it. So, so I had two shifts going on every day, mm -hmm. slaughtering about uh, roughly about, you know, 10,000 chickens a day, just trying to supply everybody uh, mm -hmm. seven days a week, you know, just going yeah. crazy, trying to supply all of the supermarkets. Okay. And I said, oh boy. So I ran all of that business while my father ran some of the supermarket business and my wife ran some of it too to you know basically help me you know downtown and to help my father in the supermarket business too so mm -hmm. that's how the business got to became famous as Lee's Poultry way back in Hong Kong and my dad was telling me this but I don't know if that's true or not so <laughs> I couldn't tell you <laughs> so so it grew so fast yeah yeah it, 
it's a fast growing business back then, but it's there is so much regulations now. Yeah. You cannot get into it right now. It'd be very difficult. Mm -hmm. So you're so, watching the industry grow, right? Yes, it is growing a lot still. Verified the whole process. So yes. besides your family, are there any Chinese running like out your business? Like your family? Uh, yeah, there is a... There's a, I think there's about you know two or three Chinese business that are that are still you know slaughtering, you know those particular Chinese type of chicken, like okay. the one you know like the Long Kong chicken, yeah, right, mm -hmm. and and some of the you know silky chickens like mm -hmm. the you know Chuxi Kai. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so there are companies who are doing, but they but they are all provincially regulated. They are not federally regulated. And they okay. are smaller in size, is that right? Or yeah, they are, they are very smaller, in, in, yes, in mm -hmm. size compared to a Maple Lodge or a Maple Leaf mm -hmm. or Sergeant Farms. Yeah. For that matter, yeah. So it's, it's uh, how is it, controlled industry, huh? Yes, it, it's a very controlled industry, okay? Mm -hmm. um, most, I mean, you know, everybody makes money. Mm -hmm. For sure, yeah. From the people who are selling chicks to the people who are selling eggs to the yeah. people who are raising chickens, mm -hmm. can't say too much about the people who are processing the chickens because sometimes there is too much chicken. I see. And because the marketing board makes mistakes too, they the, those guys forecast, forecast too much chicken. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's well, not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's hard. So some of the some of the bigger companies have to sell chickens really cheap, so, like legs or or you know breast or, yeah, it's, or, it's or, or supply that Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Right. Are we facing the competition from the US? You know, US is a bigger market and bigger resources. Yeah, we are always facing competition from the US because the US always wants to wants so, to hmm. sell more chickens in the Canada. Exactly. Yeah. But because we have a marketing board mm -hmm. which you know controls that. I see they have quotas. So how many uh, Yeah. It is harder for them to actually, you know, come over into mm -hmm. Canada. Which is a good thing to mm -hmm. some extent because sometimes you don't know what type of chickens, yeah. what sort of stuff is going on in the US. They have their own regulations, right? But then again, they have to meet our regulations before they can ship it over here. Mm -hmm. Right. So there is there is also you know trade agreements between Canada and the U.S. also too. Yeah. With agriculture, with you know, with milk, with you know, chickens, with all sorts of stuff going on too. So. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Always uh, stay local. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, I mean, stay Canadian local. beef, stay Canadian local. chicken, Canadian milk. That's yeah. what I trust. I believe in. Yeah. Yeah, because like 100%, there is no hormones going in, in any of it because, okay. because the worst thing which I hear most people say is, oh, there must be hormones yeah. in this and that. There's absolutely no hormones. Agriculture Canada will find and they will, they will penalize you <laughs> yeah. very highly if you yeah. do any of that stuff. Besides, be, because when when that particular baby chick goes into the barn, there is a record. You have to keep those records up to date mm -hmm. for the from from the first day all the way to when the bird is being shipped. What mm -hmm. sort of medication? What sort of feed? What sort of minerals going on? So so there is a complete record before it goes to the plant. And mm -hmm. when the inspector at the plant sees something wrong he will not allow the plant to kill those chickens. Mm. He will send it all back to the farm, mm -hmm. whether they like it or not. So, so, you know, nothing gets past the inspector. Okay, so, and those inspectors, they're very strict. Even if you try to buy the inspector a cup of coffee, he will not accept it. Mm -hmm. He's not as supposed to accept those things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything is above board. The inspector will not do anything if he sees there's something wrong mm -hmm. from that particular record. He will not allow those chickens to be processed 
Mm -hmm. So there's a complete record from day one mm -hmm. all the way to the day that it's being slaughtered. Mm -hmm. And also when that particular plant ships it out, it has to be a certain temperature before they could ship it out. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if, you know, you could put it in a little car and ship it out to, to somebody. Yeah. It has to be refrigerated. It has to be, has to be properly refrigerated. It has mm -hmm. to be, you know, properly packaged. It has to be properly, um, you know, signed off on and everything else before it, before it gets shipped out. So every process is traced? Yeah, and every sure process it, yeah. Is, 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 that's why they can trace anything back to the farm. And if they have to do that, they yeah. can trace it right back to the hatchery even. Mm -hmm. Because there's a record from the hatchery where these eggs come from, what happened to these eggs, you know, maybe something went wrong with it, maybe something went wrong with the machine, they don't know, right? So, so there's a complete record of it. So there is no, no answer, but mm -hmm. yes. Mimi, uh, for yourself, you eat organic chicken or normal chicken? So I eat normal trust chicken. Trust everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, so because organic is, uh, you know, more expensive, what <laughs> okay let me ask you since you said uh, no hormone and no biotics so maybe no i didn't say there is no antibiotics oh, yeah you, you didn't antibiotics, say, yeah. okay <laughs> but the reason they put antibiotics is because if something happens sick. Yeah. if the chicken gets sick okay but there's a record because when those chickens get sick there's a certain period that those chickens have to be off of the antibiotics before they can be shipped to the plant for processing. Oh. Okay, so they they, yeah, they have to recover and they have to have not have that in their system also too. But some farmers like to raise everything with no antibiotics. So certain feed companies make feed with no antibiotics, which might take that particular chicken a little bit longer to reach mm -hmm. that size, right? So, so and sometimes those, died half. Then they are their cost is higher. Yeah, it's it, of course it's a lot more higher, right? Yeah, fit more it's, it's, longer it's, time, right? Yeah. yeah, and some died. Like say, you know, basically, time is money, right? So the more time you take, you got to pay more for it, and when you have to pay more feed, you got to pay more for the chickens too. So that's the way it goes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right. So select a good chicken. No need to be. Organic. People buying organic. <laughs> look, let me be clear with you, okay? When people are buying the organic chicken, there's nothing wrong with with the organic chicken. The organic chicken is like regular chicken, but it's raised a little bit different. Okay, it's in the same barn. They have a little bit more room to move around. Normally it's normally it's probably it's probably one square foot per bird in a normal thing. Okay. okay. Yeah. It has a measurement. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Be because of the size of the chicken, right? Roughly, okay. But when you're doing the organic chicken, there is you know organic feed. Now the organic feed has to come from a field that has been seven years without any chemicals or any um, stuff on the feed, okay? Mm -hmm. In the soil, when they grow the corn, when they grow the wheat or whatever it takes to make the feed. So that they're feeding it organic feed mm -hmm. to the organic chickens. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is regular chickens because it's the same baby chicks. Mm -hmm. They can't change this, that particular right. baby chick, mm -hmm. but they're feeding it a different feed that has no chemicals on the feed, no fertilizer, you know, on the feed, yeah. which would be contaminated. Yes. So basically, they have to send it to the plant that actually makes organic feed mm -hmm. to feed it's it. High organic. end market. That's right. Nation, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So some people feel they need that because of their health. I feel I need because I have right? a three year old daughter. So I always raise her organic yeah, which is fine. Which is fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with it, right? There's nothing wrong with it, right? I mean, some people like that, which is fine. That is 
that is a you know different segment of the poultry industry, which is fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. But some people just want to have some sort of a more natural way of the feed, not being having, you know, fertilizers and chemicals on the corn and stuff like that. And the reason those guys have to put fertilizer is because they try to keep all of the bugs and stuff like that from eating all of the feed and the corn and stuff like that. And some of the, you know, diseases. Mm -hmm. So some of the corn and the stuff always also get, you know, diseases too. Mm -hmm. So when the corn and the wheat or the oats or the barley gets, mm -hmm. uh, gets particularly, you know, you know, diseases, mm -hmm. you lose a lot of that crop. You can only use a certain amount of that crop to go make that feed. So that feed becomes more expensive, mm -hmm. right? So that's the reason for that too. Great. Yeah. So your, your father started the business and then uh, you carried the legacy and, and, then the, and then your father sold the business. Yeah. And there's no family legacy to carry on. Is that right? Or do you feel a little bit <laughs> sorry? <laughs> like, you know, for me... Well, part of this thing was because my father sort of, you know, inspired me because my father is a, he sort of wants to start his own business. So which made, right? yeah, yeah, you know, like some sort of, you know, entrepreneur. So I like to be that kind of person. I, I'm not crazy about working for the people, but I don't mind helping people, right? Mm -hmm. But I like to start my own business and you know take certain risks for myself. So if it's so if it's for me to lose money, that's because I made that you know decision. If it's for me to make that money, it's I made that particular you know decision. So, so you're in control. So everything is on my shoulder, not on everybody else's shoulder. Mm -hmm. I like to work that way. So that's my you know mentality mm -hmm. for some reason. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. No, that's no, no good or bad. Until There's the, no good or bad. Yeah. It's just the way that yeah, you that, feel. Let the history tell you what's good or what's bad. That's right, right? So, yeah. but, uh, but, so that you means know, you're, you're no longer in poultry business? Or I'm no longer in the poultry business, but I work for a particular company that actually sells meat. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, it's yeah, in food right. basic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's in the food basic by um, by Major Mac and you know Bayview. There's yeah. a food basic there. There's a there's a meat store there, mm -hmm. and I work there just you know doing just trying to keep you know busy. But right now, I do a lot of investments for myself. Mm -hmm. I have a few. Um, Diversified so, investment, right? Say again. Diversified investment. Diversified. Yeah. Yes. Different yeah. You know, I have passive, basket. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have a, I have a place in Aruba, which mm -hmm. I go to. It's, you know, it's, it is nice. Yeah. I go there maybe, maybe two or three times a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a. Oh, I went to Aruba. Oh, it, Aruba? it's beautiful. Aruba it's or Aruba? Aruba. It's Aruba. 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 Ah, I know there. It, <laughs> It is just, it is just Tropical north of, uh, you know, Venezuela. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful there. A lot of so crews parking in there as well. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of cruise ships that go by there. And, yeah. And, uh, I just happened to actually found this place because of Sifu Paul Ng. He sort of put me onto this place and I decided to invest in it. That's all. But right now I do most is investing in stocks because I spend a lot of time learning about how to mm -hmm. invest in stocks mm -hmm. from a lot of you know professionals. So yeah. I think I'm doing okay. Did, 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 you, did you get any money from Tesla due this this time? Was that <laughs> Tesla? <laughs> oh Tesla, no. I don't buy those, you know, high flying stocks. That's not my style. Okay, they are not spe like, speculative, right? So, no, I don't yeah. speculate like that. I have a system which yeah. I try to help certain people, yeah, and okay. I will, yeah. but I don't give financial advice. Yeah, I tell people, you know, if you have a stock you have in mind, you can ask me, 
what's the good time to buy it. And I'll mm-hmm. tell you what's a good time to buy it. And I'll tell you what's a, what's a good price mm-hmm. to sell it. So there's a price you should buy that. And there's a price you should sell it at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's but all I tell you. Uh, yeah. Risk taker, right? And tolerance. Not that much risk. Not that much risk. <laughs> I will tell you, this is not a good stock for you to invest in because uh, there is not enough volume in this. Okay. Or I can tell you, you know, this is not a good stock because it doesn't pay you, you know, any, you know, dividends. It, mm-hmm. You know, so you're just yeah. going on something. So you know, hold it for a while instead of day trader. Day trader is better, right? I don't day trade that much. Yeah. I don't day trade a lot. I actually, you know, I sort of West invest West. more. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't day trade a lot. Mm-hmm. So my, it, my, my last question is that uh, does the, the word, the name poultry mean anything to you? The word poultry, it's a very, you know, general word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, for you, I mean, for you, because you have been Especially. like in the poultry business for 35 years and then then and it's so meaning to you or, or emotion oh, oh it's not much to i mean that particular you know title of poultry it's very you know general to me i feel that i know so much about it and i still read a lot about you know poultry okay it's not, you know, it's not, you know, that I don't read about poetry. I read about what's coming up, what, uh, you know, new, uh, you know, discoveries, new, you know, methods of, of, you know, processing and stuff like that. I still, you know, go to certain, you know, poetry shows, you know, and I meet friends and stuff like that. Like that. Um, so, but it does mean a lot to me because I happen to be one of the, well, probably the only Chinese person that actually went to University of Guelph in 1978 to study animal and poultry science because there was nobody else that was Chinese that was studying that at all. And I thought, what the heck, I might as well study it because nobody else is studying it. You know, so I thought, why, why not try to help out my father and my parents by studying it and maybe have a you know, career in it somehow so maybe a okay. so yeah basically you're married to poultry for 35 years yeah i have a reunion coming up uh a class reunion coming up this year the 40 year reunion since i graduated in 1982 okay <laughs> so it's 40 years reunion yeah. coming up i'm not sure if i can make it there for that particular time that those guys want but you yeah. know you know we'll see okay Good. Right. So, Rebecca, any, any other question you have? Um, no, thank you for sharing, Jimmy. I'm yeah. so um, impressive. Uh, I'm impressed. Oh. And um, yeah, we all love chicken. Okay. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't be so impressed with you know, what I know. It, it is just common knowledge that mm-hmm. a lot of people don't know. Yeah. And I like to educate a lot of people that way, especially mm-hmm. those people in Canada mm-hmm. who always come from other countries where there is all sorts of stuff going on. And I don't want to name certain countries, you know, about that, but there is always some sort of funny business going on. And I don't like that because that actually sets the whole industry back Mm -hmm. so many years and people don't trust it. And in Canada, we have all of that trust and we don't want to break that that particular trust, especially when when it comes to food. Right. Yeah. Because we all have to eat. Time. Yeah. Right. So let's let's eat more chicken. Support Canada. That's right. <laughs> eat more, more local chickens. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. You right. Actually, yeah. Jimmy yeah. inspired us as well. You said your father inspired you. You inspired yes. us and everybody. I think. Oh. Oh, thank Maybe. you very much. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So Jimmy, uh, good to talk to you. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, so. It's a nice talk, and I hope everybody is safe and healthy for the time. All right, take yes. care. Bye. Okay, same to you guys. Bye. Thank you, Jimmy. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. Jimmy, again, quickly.